Hello everyone. So I'm having a hell of a time recording biome episodes. I just recorded like two hours of them, but I'm absolutely positive no one gives a shit to that degree. Especially since all the changes I made were relatively minor and iterative. Um, you'll probably be implementing it yourself in your own way if you're serious about this. But if you're planning to use my methods, I figured, okay, well, I'll go ahead and show you how you might build some biomes. So let's go ahead and clear out these biomes and build some new ones. So let's build a biome, which we will call Flatland, with an ideal moisture of 0.5 and no rockiness to speak of. And let's put in some dirt. Dirt. And you can see that that just creates flat land. Very, very flat land. But we wanted to, be, we wanted to add some, some specialness to that, so let's go ahead and add some more brick layers. Let's add some sand. So we're going to make this one below height 12, but we're also going to add in an above... Mm, blobs are really tiny. Mountains are larger. Moisture is larger and rockiness is the largest. So let's go ahead and make it blobs. Let's reduce the weight of this so that it won't win against our sand. And press play. There you go. Got little pieces of sand all over. Not terribly interesting though, is it? Mm, not really. Well, let's go ahead and see what happens when we take an ice cream scoop to that. They don't have to be in caps or anything, I'm just being silly. So we'll lay down the brick none, meaning to carve it out, and then we'll just do the exact same thing, except we're going to make it above blob value 0.7, and we're going to increase the weight to 2. And now you can see that our sand now has pits carved out of it. So we've got like micro craters or something. This isn't exactly cool, it's just weird. Also, the ice cream scoop, because it says below height 12 and there's no limit to that, it can actually carve out the bottom of the map, which you may have noticed if you were paying real careful attention a little earlier. And we don't want that either. So let's go ahead and add in one more brick layer, which we'll call ice cream. Now the key here is that this is below height 10. Oh, uh, I need to up its weight. Sorry. Hmm, that's not working quite like I thought it would. Oh, um, hmm. It should work the same. I mean, it should be precisely the same. Let's go ahead and see whether or not we can completely replace the ice cream scoop by having the exact same values. Okay, so that worked. When we reduce the height, however, it doesn't work. Great. I was going to show it to you without, you know, the stupidity, but I guess whatever. I don't know what happened. Um, I must have had a typo or something, but this is how it's supposed to look. As you can see, we now have these little teeny, tiny, tiny, teeny little lakelets. Our low priority loading. I think we might have. I think we might have hit a bug. That's okay. I'm not. Not too fussed about that right now. I'll fix it later. So we've got these little teeny, tiny, teeny, teeny, teeny little lakelets. Let's go ahead and not have teeny, tiny, teeny little lakelets. Go ahead and make it instead of a blob. Instead of above blob value. Let's change it to above mountain value. And now you can see that we don't have teeny, teeny, teeny light, little anything. We've got these big ones. Uh, both of these don't get high enough to actually trigger the ice. Um, the mountain value has to get to at least 0.7 and whatever it is.
to make it a little bit more interesting, let's change this to 0.3 and this to 0.5 and this to 0.5. And that ought to make our flatlands a little more interesting. Yeah, there we go. So that's uh, one way to create flatlands if you wanted to have something interesting looking. Now obviously these are really flat lands um, and you can add in more more layers of stuff um, so that you can have a little bit more variety in your life. Uh, for example, you might make pockmarks with the blob height or something like that. Well, let's go ahead and not talk about it. Let's do it. And then we'll make the mountains and then I'll be done. So pockmarks of, oh, come on, none, weight 1, below height 11, and above blob value 0.5. Now you can see we've got little bumps, but you can also see that they um, carve out the bottom of the land. And that's what I was talking about. You have to be a little bit careful when you're using erase. So instead of below height, let's use above height and let's make it 3. There you go. Now we've got a little bit of texture to our landscape. It doesn't look, uh, it looks weird, but that's uh, something you can massage or perhaps you like it to look weird. It's up to you. But there's another thing we have to do and that is to create another biome. So let's go ahead and create a hill biome. So the biome, when you clone it, it actually, when you add to it, it actually clones the last entry. So we've got another flatland biome. Uh, the ideal rockiness of 0.7, for example. And let's take it down to one dirt, one layer. And of course, dirt is what we want. But let's go ahead and set, instead of below height 10, let's go ahead and make it below height loud ass sirens in the background. Above height, negative one. Now this will draw to the top of the sky so we also want to add in a below height 30 and now we've got between 0 and 30. Well, we don't want it to always go from 0 to 30. Uh, we really don't want to have it go all the way up to 30. So what we're actually going to do is add in another one where we say above mountain value. Uh, how about above blob value? And make the threshold uh, 0.5. Um, Except that's not, that totally defeats the purpose of creating a baseline, doesn't it? Uh, mm, I guess we have to do it the same way we did it the first time. I was trying to be clever, but I shouldn't have tried to be. So we've got one that's dirt. But then we want one that's, say, how about rust so we can tell it apart? So we want our rust to have a below height 30. Uh, let's go ahead and make it 40. And we also want it to have the mountain value requirement of above mountain value 0.5. And in turn, we should have a, um, a hill system. But the hills are, of course, pretty basic. Let's see whether or not we have any within a viewing range here. I don't see any. The mountain value has to increase in order for us to hire some. So you see that there is a problem here, and that problem is uh, that we have a floating hill. Now you might be asking, why is it floating? Well, the reason it's floating is because the mountain value is a ball in the sky. So this part here, that's that's a mountain, but then down here, there's no mountain value. That the mountain value isn't that high. So that's uh, re the, the reason that you get floating islands. The other reason you can get floating islands is the biome can actually shift in midair, but that's much rarer. So let's go ahead and make it so that it doesn't happen, and the way we can do that is by saying above mountain value negative one. However, that means that it will always trigger. It will run from 40 down to zero all the time, and we don't want that. So we've got two options. One is we can add further restrictions, and then another is that we can carve it away. So let's go ahead and carve it away. So when we want to carve something away, we have to make sure that it's not going to carve away the ground itself. So we put in an above height restriction. 
and then we want it to carve only in the places we want it to carve. So in this case, let's go ahead and make it so that it carves based on the edge of the biome, so that we have a neat rise as we get uh, away from uh, from the from the flatlands. To do that, um, we want to change this to the same height as the uh, basic dirt height, which is 10, so that we don't carve into the ground. And then we are going to go ahead and add a below rockiness value of 1. Rockiness will be varying between 0 and 1, and we trigger as the rockiness goes up. So it makes sense that uh, we will carve away as we uh, um, uh, we will carve away as we get uh, sorry we'll carve away closer to the ground at the edge and then we will steadily decrease the problem is that the above height trigger may screw that up we'll see we may have to add in a below height as well all right so you can see it worked fine we've got this really gentle slope going up the hill Now, of course, you probably want to add some stuff to the hill. No reason not to. And since that is apparently all of the hill I get in this particular load, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and add it in as green lattice so that we can see it. And um, Above height 10 is fine, but we actually want this to be below height. And see, our hills can go up to 40, so we're going to let this go up to 50. And our hills can go up to above mountain value negative 1. We actually want to use blob value for this. But the problem is that we're also going to hit situations where our blobs float above our hills. Uh, let's go ahead and check it out. That may not happen because the carver may actually take care of that. So as you can see, this is an iterative process where you, uh, where you want to figure out how it looks, and then, oh, there we are. Uh, yeah, so here we got a problem where the biome changes in midair, and I was going to, I was mentioning this. Um, my mouse is way off to the side, so I can't tell what the hell's going on. I certainly can't gesture for you. So the carver didn't do a very good job there. Um, so it might need some. You might need to refine it some. But here you can see that we've got our blobs floating on top of our hills, giving us a little bit of texture. But in some cases, they are literally floating. So to fix that, um, let's go ahead and lower them a little bit closer to the surface of the hill. Now you can do a lot of stuff, and I've had the very complicated biomes beforehand, but a big part of the fun in these games is crafting the biomes. Now I know that you can create like a biome generation, um, you know, you can program each biome as a, as a standalone class um, and have the, each one handle itself differently, but that's not a very data-driven way to do it. If you do biomes that way, then you'll tend to uh, not be able to handle mods or patches or player created biomes whereas if you do biomes this way you can actually just change the biomes nature by changing some values in a file somewhere uh, it's very forgiving and you can you know load it from a database or whatever um, but that said there are some weaknesses to this approach uh, which we're not going to get to anytime soon anyhow I just wanted to show you these kinds of biomes and I've got to increase the carver. It's a little bit... I know what I'll do. There we are. That's more interesting, don't you think? So once again, our uh, green lattice Bumpington is off the top of our hill, but you know, that's something you can refine, either by lowering it or by making it weaker so the cover tends to win or whatever, whatever you decide. But a big part of this game, one of the things in this game that uh, I haven't covered is 
you are going to be able to get out of your mech and walk on the surface. And therefore caves are a great way to do that. So it's good that these hills have caves, and those were enabled by changing the way that the uh, carver worked. Um, and it really all depends on how you want to build your biomes. But I hope you've learned how to use biomes a little bit more and can build your own. And from here on out, it's going to be mostly gameplay. I am going to build some biomes, but that's going to be off camera. Now that you know how it's done, I won't subject you to the hours of work it can take to polish these things so they don't look like, well, like that. <laughs>